Welcome to the third video in my viral video series, Virus Illness Prevention. My name is Jennifer Norton and I'm the coordinator for health services for the Hempfield School District. When we are talking about coronavirus or really any infectious illness, be it virus or bacterial, we really need to just get back to the basics. And the best thing that we are recommending right now in accordance with the CDC and other um, resources is good hand hygiene. And this means washing hands with soap and water thoroughly for at least 20 seconds so that we can actually physically remove the germs from the hands and send them away and down the drain. Um, we have certainly can use hand sanitizers. They are another tool in our toolbox for hand hygiene. However, hand sanitizers don't actually remove germs from hands, they can sanitize them. Um, and it's important to know that you have to use hand sanitizers correctly and thoroughly on all surfaces of your skin to make sure that, um, that they penetrate any germs that may be present. So really good old fashioned soap and water is the best way to go. Next, we need to practice good cough and illness hygiene. And this means covering coughs with our elbow, with a tissue, um, and making sure we get rid of tissues right away and not um, spreading respiratory droplets within our community. Avoid touching your face. This is probably one of the most important pieces of advice I can give. Your face has all kinds of openings that can allow germs, illnesses in that can make you sick. It is one of the most um, sensitive places in your body that illness can enter. So anytime you touch your face, you increase the risk of illnesses like, such as the coronavirus, the flu, um, uh, like a stomach flu or GI illness, um, and many other illnesses. So if you can make a habit of stop touching your face and avoid touching your face, you will be a lot healthier. Next, it's a good idea to observe good personal space. Most of these viral illnesses transmit through respiratory droplets, through coughs and sneezes through the air. The more space, the more feet that you put between you and other people, the safer you will be. Stay home and away from other people when you're sick. It is really important to stay home, take good care of yourself, um, and stay away from other people to avoid making them sick. We recommend that students and folks stay home, especially when they have a fever greater than 100, and that they stay home for at least 24 hours after that fever is gone without the use of fever reducing medications such as Tylenol and Advil. Seek appropriate care and treatment for illness. There are remedies, um, there's support and um, treatments out there for some viral and of course bacterial illnesses. Um, so you can, in, you can get that kind of care in conjunction with your healthcare provider. Last, prepare. This is a good reminder now with the coronavirus um, information and always, we should always be prepared for our schools, our students, and our families for cases that there could be widespread illness, widespread illness or shelter in place situations. Environmental hygiene, I have answered a lot of questions about cleaning and disinfecting recently. And I'm um, happy to report that in our schools, we have a fantastic custodial department. I met with them last week, and we're already incorporating all the practices necessary to keep our schools as healthy and safe as possible. Um, they are using rated cleansers to, use, and to clean and disinfect all of the hard surfaces, and especially those high touch surfaces that many people may touch, such as counters, knobs, um, and common areas. They're doing a fantastic job um, and they're working very hard to make sure that our environment in our Hempfield School community stays safe and healthy. I'd like to do a little vocabulary lesson with you and introduce the word fomite. A fomite is any non-living object that can carry and spread germs. And in our day in society, we need to be aware of our fomites, things like iPads, phones, other personal devices that can carry germs from one place to another. Um, in our Hempfield School District, our technology department makes cleaning wipes available for iPads and devices. And I would encourage you to do the same practice at home to keep your fomites from transferring germs to someone else. There are a lot of ways we can stay healthy and we can consider um, many health factors. We educate students each and every day to eat well, to hydrate with water, to get good exercise and to get good sleep. All of these things are going to help 
everyone in our community stay healthy. In addition to washing hands, practicing good hygiene, and avoiding getting contact with germs, our next best defense against viruses such as coronavirus is our own immune system. So we want to do everything that we can to strengthen that immune system so it works for us. So if we are exposed to a germ that might cause illness, then our immune system does its job and we don't get sick. Other ways we can stay healthy, mindfulness, meditation, care for your skin and your mucous membranes, keeping your skin hydrated with lotions and your mucous membranes hydrated by drinking water and using saline sprays or humidifiers keeps your immune system in tip-top condition so it can fight off germs if, they, if you come in contact with them. Manage any health conditions that may increase your risk for contracting illness, especially things like allergies, asthma, cardiac conditions. Build an immunity bank. When we receive immunizations, we build our immunity bank for the future. And we receive protection against different viruses and bacteria. Um, so even if we do happen to get to that illness, we could have a less severe form or a uh, shorter version of that illness, even if we do get it. So things like flu shots, immunizations, they help build our immunity bank so that we can stay as healthy as possible. I'd also like to um, point out that there are so many fantastic complementary therapies, um, alternative and integrative health practices that can help boost our health, support our health, and good habits that can really go a long way to keep us healthy and um, away from illness. We've gotten a lot of questions recently about face masks, so I'd like to take a little bit of time to review some fast facts about face masks with you. I included a diagram here of some common particles that may be used, uh, that face masks may be used to protect against. And starting with dust, pollen, and mold, that's a, a rather large particle. Um, the next one is a red blood cell to give you an idea. Um, the next one is a smoke uh, particle example. That nice blue um, bacteria is uh, next in line, and the very last one, that little dot right here, represents how small a virus is. Viruses are very, very small. They're tricky. Um, so if we talk about dust masks, basically these are ineffective. These dust, dust masks work for dust, pollen, and mold, these large particles. So if you're sanding a project or if you're avoiding pollen and mold exposure, that's your choice. Unfortunately, they really don't have any value as far as protection um, for health concerns. Surgical masks, they are okay. If you're sick and you're trying to avoid spreading respiratory droplets from yourself to others, but I'll give you a hint, the better idea might be to consider staying home and just away from other people. Last, the media has had a lot of attention on N95 masks. These are good masks. However, you need to be properly fitted and trained how to use them. You also need to follow all other precautions um, while you're using these masks. And it is recommended that you be either a healthcare worker or a caregiver um, working with sick individuals to be using these masks. As part of this series and other communications from the district, we are gonna keep the dialogue open. We welcome your questions and concerns. Um, I would invite you to contact your school nurse if you have any concerns or questions that we can help you with, as well as your healthcare providers in the community. And go ahead and check out the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website at cdc.gov. They have a lot of great information, not only about coronavirus and flu, but illnesses, immunizations, health, and wellness. Thank you so much for joining me.